Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome to Cash Talks Football, where I break down all the goals scored in the Premier League, using my vast experience from coaching for many years. Um, and today, uh, I'm going to give you some insight into the Arsenal versus Brighton game. Maybe I'll teach you something new. Maybe you'll just re refresh your memory for something you already know to become a better player, or maybe you want to become a better coach. Now, let's point out a couple of things, because this is the corner. One of the main things I always talk about is the D right here. Why do you protect the D? It's because it's in the middle of the field. Um, you always want to protect the D around here. It's very, very important. Right now, they're not really protecting it. Look, look at this. Okay, you can see that they've got, they're framing it with two players. People have been starting to do this over the last couple of weeks. Uh, previously, like last season in the uh, Champions, sorry, in the uh, uh, Premier League, no one was actually um, having attacking players out like this. Normally, you just have one, and you'd have one defending it here. They're not defending it. All right. Um, this is important. I know it doesn't matter for this goal, but it is important, especially if you want to uh, score goals as a midfielder on when corners. You might not have the best heading ability, but the ball drops here all, all the time. But right now, we're going to have a little look at what they're doing in the box uh, because they've got a hunt load of players absolutely doing nothing. And one of my biggest problems in the Premier League is, right, see where the goalkeeper is. He's further forward. Okay, so he leaves the spot at the back absolutely fine what i would be doing is having a player on the back post covering that space remember he's not marking the post he's defending that area so he can come forward and clear the ball because no one's behind him the only way he can clear the ball is forward down the field that's what you want to be doing from the post and you if your goalkeeper's too far forward which he's kind of protecting the front post and hopefully trying to catch the cross great then have someone cover his back. Have someone cover that marks little spot on the back post there. Let's move this forward a little bit so we can see the running and the movement. All of a sudden, everything starts to, everyone starts moving and going around. But this is what I want you to focus on. All the Arsenal players on the back post, right? All the Brian players on the front post. It's like, well, what, what are they doing? This guy here, I don't know what he's doing. Like, you're not marking anyone. You're not like, he, he, come stand over here and do this. But they decide to leave Gabriel Jesus, Arsenal's only striker, completely and utterly unmarked in the box. It's madness, madness defending. All of a sudden, all this comes on. Look, look, look how look, he's completely unmarked. Guy's still not doing anything. There's two guys here not doing anything. And this is allowed to happen in the Premier League. You've got Premier League quality defenders. No one's marking Gabriel Jesus. And you wonder how they've scored a, foot, a goal. It's just like, this is insane. And uh, Okay, so here comes the boy and it goes chop. Little flick. Brian Player doesn't get to it. I don't know what the keeper's doing. But again, think about if I'm coaching, because I'm having a guy on this post right here. Donf, this is never going to be a goal because he's never going to get the header because the guy on the post is going to come out and clear it before he gets to to head the, uh, the ball. He's never getting to him. But also, I don't know what the keeper's doing. He's in no man's land. He's come up here swinging and just doing absolutely nothing. Drops to Jesus and he's got an easy tap in. Bosh. Simple. Yeah. Let's get on to the next goal. Okay, we're going to come on a couple of things here and I'm going to jump it forward because I'm still in YouTube jail from copyright strikes from uh, the Premier League. It's funny, it's always on the videos when I talk about VAR. Hmm, strange. Check out my uh, VAR is going to make the Super League video happen. That's an entertaining re uh, listen. Okay, so you can see how this pass here is breaking through their little mini line here, but they've also got a problem when they're pressing with too many. They're getting caught out. You can see this massive amount of space where this guy's clearly never going to win the ball. This guy's the only one close there. He should have immediately be dropping to anticipate the pass, but he's not. Both of them ended up pressing here and getting caught out. But now they're both having to turn and chase this player, but it's too late because they've got a massive gap now that's filled because one person didn't read the situation and over, you know, pursued with his mate. His mate should have had the ball, sorry, a pressure of the ball. He could have real, realised where the ball or the pass is going and covered the area behind his mate. He didn't. They both stood up and it went straight through him. Now, I moved it on a little bit because the guy's just eating the grass. All he's really done is he's uh, he's turned and he's run, run to there. But this is one thing I want to comment on, actually, which I don't quite like. Um, I've mentioned this a couple of times in, in some of the videos, if you listen to what I'm saying, is he's got a bit more space. Take it. He's passing too early. Okay, and I know he's passing because this guy's got a bit of extra space here, but what it is, it's a bad habit. Get into good habits, and when you keep doing good habits, good things happen in football. So he should have actually just taken another little touch forward, but he doesn't because he wants to really make this guy out, out of the equation. He really wants to take this guy out, out, you know, because if this guy is faster than him, right, and he doesn't make him come in and challenge for the ball here, you do not give this guy all of the opportunity he can to run in, okay? So that's why you want to just take it in just an extra yard. That one extra yard makes he, he, he comes in one extra yard, and then you can get the drop and get the pass across. Okay, so Dom Foffy goes, knocks the ball in, bang, and there we go. But also, did you see how bad this guy turned? Did you see how awful that was? Right? <sighs> Turning is one of the most important things. This guy turned like that because he doesn't know how to stand here 
facing this way and just change his body shape and go that way. He doesn't know how to do it. Do you see him? He did a whole massive button hook to go after the player. Now this guy's got even more space because he doesn't know how to turn. Let's play that back just so you can see it again. Do you see as the pass is made? He's turned away from the ball. He's turned away from the ball. He's done this huge blah, 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 blah. He's taken four steps. One, two, three, four. And instead of getting four steps closer to the ball, he's got four steps further away from the ball. That is is terrible that's one of those things that you do um if you're ever if you're a coach and you want to uh train you know people to do this it's one of those things that you'll do in a warm-up session when you're like um if you've got a line you know your players are in two lines and you're doing sprints or you do knees up or a heels back and stuff you'll do those movements in that session in, in you know so you're doing it in every warm-up so they don't make silly mistakes like that so here he is. He's done. He's on his bike now, and he is quite pretty quick because he's almost caught up with this fella. Um, but you can see the passing. He's moved it forward a bit, but everyone's getting drawn into the ball here. Look, can you see that? He's getting drawn into the ball. He's getting drawn into the ball. And everyone is leaving Kai Havertz. Like this guy can see Kai Havertz. Give your defender a shout, oi, behind you. Because okay, so what you need to think about this is if if you're um actually properly trained in defending, soon as this guy starts giving him a shout. Right, he starts backing up and he starts coming into cover. That's what starts supposed to happen, but no, none of them do. None of them don't under actually understand what they're doing. So what ends up happening is this ball gets played through, bosh, and now everyone is out of shape and out of position because they're, they're pressuring the ball. I don't know why this guy's going towards the ball. The danger is in behind. You've got to realise the ball is dangerous. Yes, 100%, but not until it's close to the 18-yard box. The most dangerous thing for defenders when they're in between, uh, we call it no-man's land, between the halfway line and the 18-yard box, right, and you're in that no-man's land, the most dangerous thing for you is the space in behind. You don't step forward towards the ball um, because if you're the last defender the ball's just gonna go straight behind you and they're gonna smack it into the goal and that's exactly what happens i mean this is nine-year-old stuff like yeah it's terrible well Kyle Havertz gets in behind the defenders sees the keeper i think the keeper may have done a little bit better but um on 1v1s you can't really be too harsh on the keeper when there's no obvious mistakes or he hasn't come rushing out you know silly he puts it in a weird spot as well he puts it like in between the um the arm and then sort of uh hip of the guy it's a very strange shot i think he was kind of a bit lucky but he gets himself a goal and arsenal move forward to the top of the league i'll see you next time on cash talks football <laughs>